Hey, I am Dragonfly Jones, a.k.a. America is Musty. <laughs> I am the Jethro Jenkins, a.k.a. John. I'm Gardy B, and this is the Jenkins and Jones YouTube channel. We've got fresh YouTube exclusives dropping every week. Like and subscribe so you make sure you get everything in your feed. Welcome to Jenkins and Jones on the Volume Podcast Network. It is Thursday, March 21st. NCAA tournament is kicking off today, but we haven't seen any of it yet, so we're not talking about that. We are going to talk about the Ant Dunk. We're going to talk about Beyonce's new album. We are going to talk about the Short King Coffee. And we're going to play a new game at the end that uh, I just invented 30 seconds ago. As always, Jenkins and Jones hosted by LeJethro Jenkins, a.k.a. John. What's that, Bubba's? The father of the year. Come on, man. Jackson was on my ass, man. Come on. <laughs> Try to go to ballet. The Potter died, my nigga. Like, come on, G. I got, I got a child and another. Oh, I got to put some other information out there. But anyway, continue. Dragonfly Jones, <laughs> a.k.a. Tyler. Hey, everybody. I'm the gun. <laughs> I'm Gardy V, a.k.a. Mike. Motherfucking, Motherfucking, Motherfucking Mike. Mike. And we're produced, as always, by the lovely and talented Jackson Saffron. Waza! Waza! All right, y'all. Let's talk about this Anthony Edwards dunk. That shit was like a fucking atom bomb. I, 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 like, you have to not just watch the slow motion. You have to watch the full speed video from the side view because the, the speed and violence with which he arrived was truly poetry. What did it do to your soul and or wieners to see that dunk? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it was fucking incredible, bro. Um, I think the wildest part of it was homie who he dunked on would just like... <laughs> Bro had to like cradle his face and go through like concussion protocol and shit. You get dunked on so bad that you got to go through the same shit that a motherfucker has to go through with like fucking Bob Miller lights him up on the blind side and shit. Like that was what was wild to me. But you know, it was fucking incredible. I, what I like most about it was when Ant saw saw the mm-hmm. clip. Mm-hmm. One thing I love about Ant is he does not take it for granted how cold of a motherfucker he is. Right? Like you saw him smile like, yeah. He was like, wow. He was like, yo, I really am a bad motherfucker. Hey, that shit was cold. I ain't gonna lie to you. He was like, that's the best dunk of his career. He said that that's his favorite dunk he ever did. And it was just, it was a fucking moment, bro. Only thing I wish that he didn't like dislocate his finger or whatever. So we could have got yeah, some yeah. real, you know, celebration at the end, but. I also love in the response, he was like, little nigga, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, we talked about Ant, like, him not taking, you know, the skills challenge serious enough, and he'll figure all that type of shit up. So, uh, you know what I mean? But I love the fact that he leans into who he is wherever he's at. And we don't mm-hmm. see people as good as him. Like, you know, like people that are so brand conscious, they're not going to speak that way in that moment. He, he was, that was his natural reaction. He's going to give us his natural self, and I love that. But the dunk itself, bro, Niggas that dunk off two feet, like those dunk-ons are generally so fucking nasty and so explosive, bro. You know what I mean? And like he, <laughs> it was, it was, I, who is going to even try that in that moment? Of course, Ant is, you know what I'm saying? And he, and he can actually do it, but it was, it was, it was incredible. And like, I think he poked, the Poco do in his eye or something. I hate that, but like his reaction just made it funnier. And I found out there were a lot more people that watched basketball that are my friends and I knew that were hitting me up like, why did Hobie was he was just crying after like he, he just he just sat down I'm like I didn't even know you watched hoops but let's talk to talk about it you know what I'm saying but yeah G man and has people interested in basketball that I didn't even know were interested in basketball or would be interested in basketball he's a big fucking deal man I'm excited for the Ant Edwards led NBA yeah for sure yeah he did, yeah I like Tyler you had the right analogy that was a Brian Dawkins hit of a dunk. Like he, right. like he fucking he, he caught him coming over the middle and just fucking bodied the shit out of him, bro. The thrill and excitement of March Mania is here, and DraftKings Sportsbook, one of America's top-rated sportsbooks apps, is giving new customers a shot to turn five bucks into one hundred and fifty dollars instantly in bonus bets with any college basketball bet. The men's tournament is a blast every year, but I'm hyped for the women's tourney too. Got to tap in to see Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, and Juju Watkins. North Carolina listeners, don't forget, DraftKings Sportsbook is now live in your state. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code Jenkins. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code Jenkins. The crown is yours. All right, speaking of that, well, here's a good entree into that. We had a, a conversation uh, on the Monday pod that a lot of other people oh. have taken up on uh, Twitter. And so here's my question to you guys as a way to get into it. Is dunking on someone like that a skill? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 
you you, you got to know your angles and you got to find that 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 crack of daylight to get it past them and shit. Dunking on somebody absolutely is a skill. I think dunking is instinctual. Like I think in the moment you decide when you go boom on a nigga. You know what I'm saying? You you ain't really. It's it's more like. Like it's 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 more physical than like thinking. It's just like I'm trying to outdo somebody in a particular way. I'm, you know, and I think that's like a it's a, that's a particular archetype. Like that's a a bouncy nigga. You know, he has bounce. I don't know if that's necessarily like something you work on in the gym alone. You know what I'm saying? You just in the moment I'm gonna try to boom on this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? It's like two bodies pushing against one another, and you trying to push harder than the other. That's how it kind of feels in the moment. You know what I'm saying? This is scary. I've actually dunked on a nigga though. Like, I've dunked on a couple niggas like, when I was playing. Like, so that's how I felt to me. But I wasn't yeah. like Aaron Edwards where I could like move the ball in the air. You know what I'm saying? And, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just, maybe, maybe I feel that way because that's all I could do is I'm trying to jump over you in this moment. I didn't have the options in the air that these yeah. fucking gods had. You know what I'm saying? So, here, so here's, my, uh, here's my piece on the most skilled debate and, you know, Kyrie Irving and all that. That's what, that's what we're, we're referencing. And, and this is actually Dame Lillard's fault for, 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 for reopening <laughs> the bag on Kyrie. Reignited the fire. Ever. <laughs> I just fully agree with, like, and like I said in the last spot, I understand John and many other people indexing ball handling and scoring or layup packages as the hardest to develop skills, like the skills that the most people are trying to develop that you can see most clearly the mountaintop. However, being able to dunk on someone like that is a skill. Being a great passer is a skill. Being a great defender is a, re- is a skill. Being a great shot blocker is a skill. Like all those things, like shooting, like the argument that Steph Curry is not the most skilled player ever. No one's better at his best skill in history than him. LeBron James is be- is the best at the most basketball skills think, of yeah. any player. So, and, yeah. and to me, that's just all of them work. So, like we've talked about this. If you see Montrez Harrell in a fucking open run with NCAA Division One players, he looks like Bill Russell probably looked. <laughs> like, oh, bro. All these dudes are unbelievably skilled. Seeing him at the Drew? Basketball. Right. All of a sudden, he's a deep ball shooter. Like, nigga. <laughs> that, that's what all I'm of a sudden, he's the coldest three point shooter in the room. You know what I mean? But go right. ahead. Go ahead, Tom. So that, I, 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 go ahead. Yeah, so that's my that's my feeling on it. I think I kind of sat it out a little bit while, while y'all talked about it. But I do, I just want to open up by saying I think Tyler's right, which I know John oh, will yeah. be very surprised by. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anybody's surprised by that, but go ahead. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so basically, you know, like I said, when people say Kyrie is the most skilled player ever, I think they're saying he's the most versatile scorer ever. And to whittle it down a little bit even more, I think they're specifically saying that he has the most offensive counters of any basketball player ever. And I want to be clear that this is not me like reducing or minimizing Kyrie here, right? Because at its essence, these things that Kyrie thrives at, at its essence, that's what basketball is, right? Basketball is like a chess game where the defense is going to try to box you in. They're going to try to put you in a bad situation. And it's up to the offense and their basketball IQ to figure out how to get out of those situations and use their basketball talent to get a good shot at. And Kyrie is perhaps the best we have ever seen at that particular game within the game, right? At getting out of those situations. You can't paint Kyrie in a corner because he's going to always have a counter to get out of that. And he is perhaps the best we have ever seen at that, right? Like a couple nights back, Wimby blocked the Kyrie layup and we were praising Wimby. You know what I'm saying? Because that shit just doesn't happen, right? A seven foot five guy blocks a six foot two guy, and we're like, wow, the seven foot five guy touched the face of God in this moment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Kyrie is special, man. And like I said, this isn't me saying, hey, you know, let's turn down the praise on Kyrie. No, this is me saying, let's praise Kyrie properly. Let's put him in the right stratosphere. Let's put him in the right category. Kyrie is a singular talent. He's a one on one. There's only been one Kyrie in the entire history of the sport. But most skilled basketball player ever, like basketball player ever, no, he's not that. And that's okay. I, and that's not a shot or a slide of Kyrie because there's more to basketball than dribbling and getting separation and getting up a quality shot while being defended well. And Kyrie is perhaps the best we've ever seen in all of those things I just mentioned. But that does not mean he's the most skilled basketball player ever because basketball is more than those things. And like I said, Kyrie's in a class of his own with all the things I just gave him credit for. He's the best yeah. to ever do all those things I just discussed. But that does not mean he's the best basketball player, ever, the, the most skilled basketball player ever, because like I said, basketball is more than just those things. I think the most skilled basketball player is what Mike said, is the GOAT. Like, we're talking about, like, the, mo- the most skilled in the way you're talking about it. You feel me? Like, that's the most well-rounded. Like, I don't think hoopers talk about skills. And, like, if just hoopers in the room, right? Basketball player to basketball player. When you're talking about skills, you're not talking about all other shit. You feel what I'm saying? 
And so that's sure. what I'm saying. They can say most skilled. Because when your coach tells you to go work on your skills, it's your relationship to that motherfucking basketball. You know what I'm saying? Go in there. Like, like I was a nigga that in, in, in high school and in college, I'm going into the gym. I'm getting the key from the coach. You know what I'm saying? Going to the gym one-on-one, -on -one, and we working up, I'm working on my relationship with the basketball. I'm a connection with the basketball. So when the lights are fucking on, it's like a connection. It's, 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 it's the ball's on the string. You feel me? Like with Kyrie, the ball's not on a string. The ball is a fucking limb. You know what I mean? And they're saying that Kyrie can do things with the basketball in relationship to the basketball that nobody else can do. Like everybody else, like you could, I worked, I mean, obviously I'm not, I'm not comparing myself to none of these niggas, bro. I was a good hooper to regular niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like when I, I, <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? I'm you made, the Kyrie Irving of podcasters. I, yeah. like, we've seen other podcasters, what their game looks right, like recently. Right. Yeah, and you're, yeah. you're Kyrie Irving among... Cool, yeah. cool, cool, cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, for sure, for sure. But I'm not comparing myself in any way. But I'm like, you know, like, when it came... When it comes to, to like, hooping, like, you know, like, your brain has all these ideas and your body can only follow so far. Kyrie is the one player that his body can do anything his brain wants him to do. And these guys are talking about it from that aspect. So when we say you can't call them skilled, nigga, I don't give a fuck what we define as skills outside of that shit. The hoopers are talking about hoops amongst hoopers. And that's how basketball players talk basketball. People that are they're talking basketball talk basketball. So that's why I'm like, for me, that's why I said I don't fuck with the spirit of that. Because I do get what you're saying. Like I said, you're right, bro. And all this shit, you're right. But ain't nobody talking about that shit, bro. You feel me? Like, we talking about, like, your relationship to the basketball. You know what I'm saying? And nobody has a better connection or relationship to the basketball than Kyrie fucking Irving. And that's why when um, uh, Draymond jumped in there, he talked about, he talked about. I was going to, I was yeah. going to chime in here. Wow. Yeah, Dray, yeah. Yeah. Draymond talked about the most skilled player. He talked about Kyrie brought up Steph as well, which you, which uh, Mike brought up as well, because that's how basketball players talk basketball. So, like, for me, it's like, like, I'm, I'm trying to think about it. This is the comparison I have. All right, this, this is probably not the best one. I'm just, this is off the top of the head. Like, if we in the group chat, nigga, you feel what I'm saying? And you send a baddie in the group chat. And I'm like, you know what I'm saying? This is the best. I mean, this, this is, we'll see if it, it makes sense. That though, never right? happens. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that we'll would be the first time. Yeah, right, right. The <laughs> first time ever. Christian We're white guys. Chat. We don't even look, we don't even see other women. You know what I mean? Tyler would throw his phone out the window. Yeah, first yeah, time. for sure, Tyler, for yeah. sure, for sure. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, whatever, whatever, right? And the nigga say, yeah, but is she fiscally responsible? Nigga, we ain't talking about that. The fuck? We talking, get into these ass and titties. We talking about ass and titties. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like nigga, what's a horrible about? analogy? No, 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 no but, <laughs> but no. I mean, the thing is, like, that's we talk, a horrible analogy. We're, we're it could be, it could be, it could be. Oh, I like it. No, no, thank you, thank you, thank you. But are we talking like about? It. I'm also on John's side. It's, it's, it's homies talk. It's, 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 we talking about shit in a particular way. Like, we ain't talking about women. We talking about. We talking about the best. We talking about. We talking about ass and titty. We talking, we talking about like basketball. We're talking about skills. We're talking about his relationship to the his relationship to the basketball. You feel me? His relationship with him but and the players ball. also overly in debt. Like if you get around a group, you of can say all that, but but no, that's no, not no, no, the no. reason why they talk about it like that. They're going to talk about who hits who the hardest. That's not the most important skill for a but linebacker, but that's but what they value. You're talking about a particular position within the game. Niggas, a big would talk about Kyrie as he being the most skilled. No, because okay, people but, okay, that play okay, basketball okay, but, value but take someone that. In his position, take someone in his position. Okay. You think his skill set is more valuable than Steph Curry's skill set? I don't think it's so more because valuable. Basketball Nobody's players talking are about it that way. We're talking about, you know, like, you, you, that's what you're seeing it as, right? They're seeing is this relationship to the rock. His relationship to the fucking basketball, his connection to the basketball, is better than anybody else's in the history of the game. I agree with that. And I agree that's, that and, basketball and that's players what they, do. And that's what you talk about when you're importance on that. I just don't building, understand. When you're building your skill set. I just don't think that's correct. But, 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 that's correct. But, you, but, to, but also, like, the gods are talking. Who gives a fuck what we think? they can be wrong. They can be wrong, but, who, but, like, nigga, like. Ba basketball players say dumb shit all the time. <laughs> but Shaq just bro. said, shit, the best fucking, the most dominant player of all time just said no one has ever been afraid of LeBron. Bro, okay, like, no, they nigga, say dumb nigga, shit all the nigga. time, bro. But when hoops are talking about the essence of hoops, bro, you feel me? Which is your relationship to the fucking basketball. This is not that. You feel me? And let's talk, that's, why they, that's how they define skills. That's how hoopers define skills. You feel me? And so, like, they can say he's the most skilled because that's how they're talking about it. And y'all understand that. And so, for me, it's just odd when it's like, you need to define that better. No, they don't. 
They, you know what I'm saying? That's how, that's how, that's how basketball I, I players think, talk basketball. I, if, you know if, what I'm saying? If, but 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 here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm gonna tell you where you, where your ass and titties analogy falls short. You know, okay. if someone <laughs> asks if someone if someone asks is she that's fiscally, fine. That's fine. It's, yeah. It's, if, it's, if, if 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 someone asks is she fiscally responsible, you know that someone is trying to find a knock here. Right. And and I'm not coming from a place where I'm trying to find a knock on Kyrie. Like I said, I'm not trying to turn down the praise on Kyrie. I'm saying let's praise him properly. He is not the best, the, the most skilled basketball player ever, because, you know, like we discussed, it's LeBron to me. He is the most deadly fucking Swiss Army knife but, in the history but of the that, sport. But there's a conversation for that. That's a GOAT conversation. You're, you're, that, that, the Venn diagram of that and the go conversation is a fucking circle. That's a go conversation. And that's what it should be, right? That's not true. But, the, no, the go no. conversation is about winning that's versus skill. No. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, because, because people, best, people, best, people, best. no, no, because people will admit yeah, that LeBron does, does more things better than MJ, but lots of people will not yeah. admit that, okay, that, that okay, LeBron okay. is better than MJ. Best it's, it's not inclusive. It's not but, all but inclusive. When, we, when we're talking best basketball player, right? That's what we're talking about. So fuck everybody else. Me, us three, us four in here. When we're talking best basketball player, we're talking about all of that. Goat, you know, that, that talks about, that has career and all that shit. We've talked about the difference, the difference between best and, and great greatest. You feel me? The, so Bron, ob, objectively, I think most people is the best basketball player. Then they start adding in career, which Jordan comes into play. You know what I'm saying? Which you say Jordan, cool. You feel me? But like, dog, that's, that's why I'm like, that's why I don't really fuck with that. I'm like, dog, like, that is a different conversation. When they're talking skills, we know what they're talking about. Like, we know where they're coming from. I'm, I'm not saying I don't know where they're coming speak. from. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm saying, but like, I, 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 I'm, I'm if you know where they're coming understand. from, I'm just if saying you know where they're coming from, and we're like, we better, we, we, we need a bit different. No, we don't. That's how niggas that Well, I do, because I don't see the game that, like, it, that's not the most important part that, of basketball that, to me. That's, so I, so it, that's it, not how I'm going to approach it. You, you saying what? The relationship with the basketball is not the most important part of basketball? No, I'm saying, like, that's the essence of the game. That's the essence of the game. I'm not disagreeing that it's the essence of the game. I'm not disagreeing that it's a very important skill. But I, the point I'm making, again, like, I, to me as a basketball fan, would look at the way LeBron plays, would look at the way that Steph plays, and also value the things they do just as much. Because I'm not an NBA basketball player. So I'm not, the, the, the relationship to the basketball is not the most important thing to me. And I think that they're that's not saying it's fine. more important. They're not saying it's more. Yes, they important. are. When they say when when, when they're, they're not saying I don't think they are. No, they're not. They're not. Skilled. Jackson, go I don't ahead. Think they Jackson, are. Go ahead. They're not saying I, it's more I, important. I, this Listen. is where I agree with John, and I want to chime in about the Draymond stuff because Draymond and I talked off the pod, which I don't think I'm like breaking any rules here by saying this part of it. <laughs> don't and get I was yourself like, fired for Draymond. I don't think I'm going to get fired. <laughs> No, no, no. We can always. I was out, just like, so okay, if we agree that like Kyrie and Steph are like the two, two of the most common answers for the for the most skilled player in the NBA. Then I was like, okay, then what's the difference? I was the one who brought it up. I was like, what's the difference there? Is it like basketball IQ? Like, why is Steph so much better? We all agree, like more valuable to a basketball for sure. team than the, even though the skills are so close. And and Dre was like, it's ba- it's Steph is his basketball IQ. He was not talking shit about Kyrie. To yeah. be clear. He was just saying Steph Curry's basketball IQ is like off the charts. Yep. And like, and I think that's the difference there. And I think that's what a lot of, um, again, it doesn't matter, like whether you think that's what should be classified as a skill or not, yeah. whatever. But I think that it's about the one, when, what John is describing. And I think what I sort of can under, agree with a little bit is, is the skills idea is about learned physical skills, learned ones, not, the, not, not, not like born physical skills like your size, learned physical skills, it, which, which I agree, Mike. That's a false Mike. dichotomy, bro. Which I agree sort of yeah. like um, sets to the side some of like the defensive and playmaking aspects, which are like mental skills that you, that you need to learn. But like, yeah, which, which, is, which under, understates the idea of a mental skill. Right. But they're talking about the, the, just the physical, learned physical skills. But that's how they talk about basketball. And so for me, it's like, and that's how everybody on every level, and you say you're not an NBA player, nigga, like, if you in a, in a if you play like Vinny's ki- kids, when you talk about, you know, Vinny's age, like in every level, you know what I'm saying? I've never been to a level close to ba- like, like, but like every level I've been on, they talk about basketball in that way. So like, I understand you're right. You're right. You, you feel me? Like what you, how you just, but like nobody talks about basketball in that way, bro. And so that's, that's why I'm like, nobody that's, that's around basketball in basketball talks about basketball like that. So that's why, I'm, that's why I'm like, I don't know. I don't fuck with the spirit of that shit because that's not how people that fuck with the game really talk about the game. And that's what that's why I'm at with it. But I understand y'all are right. No, I fuck with you know the game saying? and love the game and talk about the yeah, game. Yeah, I just I know, I'm bro. just like I, I'm just mom, I'm just saying like if, if you as a I don't know. I maybe maybe it's like I I I I spent a lot of time me one on one with that basketball, right? 
And like seeing Kyrie is like, God damn, bro. For sure. You know what I'm saying? No, it's, it's, it's like it's like like being alone in the gym, me and the ball, trying to build a relationship. And there's times you feel like it's connected to you, right? But like, and I think this is where they're coming from, because like they them niggas spent more time than you could even imagine working on their fucking game. And I'm like, this nigga can go to a place that I've never seen anybody go to with that fucking rock. And that's so beautiful to see. And they're speaking to that. And then we're like, we need a better definition. It's like, I don't, uh, bro, we just saw a nigga do something that, and people were sending, sending me like that I, To be clear, I don't think Tyler and I have ever said we need a better definition. We understand I mean, exactly no. what people are saying, and we have a different interpretation of the word skill. Like I, I mean, which, which I think is like a but very you're saying, normal no, but, thing. No, but the thing is like, <laughs> he said something, right? And you're like, well, I don't know if we could say that. We need to say this. That's what was, that's what was, that's what y'all coming from. Here's, 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 a, here's a question I have for you guys, because you, you have already acknowledged, obviously, that there are other parts of the game that are important. Do you think that the gap between Steph Curry and everyone else in shooting is the biggest gap between the top player in a skill and the second best player? Yes, and I think Kyrie's more. I think Kyrie's, or I think I think Steph is more skilled than Kyrie. To be clear, I don't even think he's the most skilled player of all time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I do, I do for sure. I think I think in shooting the gap, yes, but in relationship to the basketball, I think Kyrie has. Can do things and nobody's going to like. I agree. And, and, I, I completely you know agree what I'm saying? with you. And I so, completely so, agree with you. But, but and also, I do think when you're talking about skills, I think Steph is right there. Like, I think Steph is right there. We're talking about his relationship with basketball. I just think, you know, his, his shooting makes him a much better basketball player than Kyrie. But you know, what I'm I saying, just, I, I, I think a thing that NBA players are struggling to come to grips with, and I'll be honest with you, I think you are not the only person who's good at basketball who's also struggling to come to grips with it. There's never been a time when ball handling is less emphasized in the way that the professional basketball <laughs> is played. Like, but he can also they, shoot like, the ball. He's 50-49 guy. They're doing everything they can to take guys dribbling the ball out of the, like, it, it, like They're moving everything they can towards ball movement, getting off a screen, catching and shooting, right? It's not and ball like, handling, though, bro. It's not just ball handling. It's... I know I understand that, but but I'm saying he's a like 50, that, 40, 90 guy. He's always flirting with that. So it's not just ball handling. You feel me? That's I know, a but small you're not part talking, of it. You're not talking about the percentage he shoots threes at. Or you're, I'm talking, talking about, about he can shoot though. <laughs> he can no, no. I mean, in shooting steps better. I'm talking about dude. There's a bunch of when, when you're in relationship with the ball. Like when you're shooting the field. Like I, I would like okay. As I would walk around doing figure eights with the ball in my hand, just walking around the house, and that would help with my shooting. Because that was building my connection with the ball. When I got the ball in my hand, it felt more comfortable. You feel what I'm saying? So that's part of it as well. Shooting is part of it. Like, and he's a good shooter. He's a good shooter. He's, he's finishing at the rim. His ball handling. You know what I mean? His creativeness. Like, he has so much he can do on both sides that nobody can do. He can go places that nobody else can go. And that's what they're talking about. And I was just like, why can't we just lean into that? You feel me? Nobody's, nobody's, nobody's taking anything away from, like, Steph and how, how how great of a skill he has in shooting and just in general, it's just like dog. These niggas that are hooping. I don't think saying, anyone's nearly as, as skilled a basketball player as LeBron, bro. I mean, that's I'm not even like making a real argument for Steph. I'm just saying like within that w- within the realm of what you're talking about. That's my point with Steph. But like what you're saying was the exact excitement I had for Braun as he came into the league. That all my other friends who also love basketball, play basketball at a high level, we're talking about is. No one's ever been more skilled at basketball. This motherfucker can do everything. Every other player, like, I mean, he ruined the concept of positions for the NBA. Like, <laughs> so, like, that, I just, and I just genuinely think it's a little, it's a short man bias, which most of us are shorter than NBA players, that, like, physical gifts, things that are perceived as physical gifts, which I do believe is a total fucking false dichotomy. Like mm-hmm. that, those are separate from developed physical skills. But and NBA I guess, like, players they're... are saying that, and they're not short men. The people that you're talking about, dude, they're saying it like Bigs. If you ask him, Bead, he probably says Kyrie. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's not just so that I don't know. In in this conversation, that doesn't apply. You know what I mean? Eh, That's I fair. don't know, bro. I don't know. N- N- NBA players are not honest with themselves a lot. Like, like I remember KD came at me because I said KD being seven foot and being able to utilize his height over shorter defenders, that is a skill that he has developed. And he took offense to that. You know what I'm saying? So so these guys are not completely honest with themselves, bro. Yeah. Being honest with themselves. And I thought but the, KD but was this is not themselves they're because talking if, about. Because if, if this it's is a not themselves skill, they're talking about. Seven footers who can shoot. They're talking about <laughs> Kyrie. 
They're not talking about okay, themselves. But, but no, I'm telling you, I'm telling you that that, that these basketball players' opinions are not the end all be all because they are even delusional about themselves, under, bro. Okay, for sure, for sure. Okay, okay. You know, but like, dude, like, I just, I just don't understand. Like, that's not just basketball. Like, niggas said, in in the game, when you're talking about skills, you're talking about it in a particular way. Like, that's how you talk about skills. Like, you don't talk about skills in the way that we're talking about skills right now. Nobody talks about skills like that in like around the game, and that's where I'm at with it. And we just disagree. That's cool. But I'm just like, I just think that's a diff such a different way of approaching than people that are actually like fucking like right that are playing the game. You know, they're in the game. You know what I'm saying? But it's how they talk about it. But, but like this is and this is where I actually do like engage in the argument, John. They're talking about it, but that's not what they're talking about is not accurate to where they to the way they lived. Kevin Durant spent just as much time developing his shot. Anthony Edwards was just talking in an interview last night about yeah. it takes. 20 years to develop the ability to shoot your jump shot the exact same way every time the way KD did. So KD was also as obsessively working skill-wise on mm -hmm. his skill of shooting with a high release point as a seven-footer as Kyrie Irving. Basketball yes. players value what Kyrie does more. I completely understand that. I just disagree. But, I and, mean, and, but and I'm saying as a viewer of basketball, I find KD as like we, we saw what seven-footers look like when we were growing up. Kevin Durant's ability to have the skills to transform my ability to even imagine what a that seven is, foot human sure, being is capable sure. of is a skill to me. And it's a skill to Tyler and it's not a skill to KD. Like I, like I understand that. I just disagree with him. And no, I, I saying, think there's a little bit of a, like uh, there's a, there's an old like French poet line. So I don't fucking remember what it was, but it's like a plant, a plant does not know about horticulture. A plant's just a plant, bro. And I don't think that like basketball analysts have more to say necessarily about basketball than basketball players. But I do sometimes think play players in sports have a bias towards certain things that I just disagree with. And I'm not saying I'm smarter than them or my opinion matters more, but I just disagree and I understand where their bias comes from. I want to say that, you know, I'm not saying that he wasn't working as obsessively as as Kyrie as Kyrie was no I don't so think anybody's why to him. split the hair on I don't, I don't, I don't think I don't think anybody's like, I don't think anybody's working more I think they're all obsessing over the game you feel me of course but Kyrie just has the ability basically with, with you know what I'm saying so to it's do a the things natural that they ability can. not a skill no I'm just I, I mean I think part of it's always natural but I think I, I, of part course. of it's natural like uh, dude Kyrie can do shit like I could work just as hard as Kyrie we talked about this me all of us can work just as hard as Steph and not be able to shoot like Steph you know what I'm saying so part of it's natural. But like, regardless of that, like he could, he he has his ability allows him to do things that others can't, and that's what they're speaking to. Nobody's saying his he's put more into it than anybody else, and that's that's how they that's how motherfuckers that, that like that's how they're talking about it. And I and I and I and I understand. I just don't. I just yeah. I just don't understand what it needs to be that you know. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, hey, I mean, I think I, I, I think we understand what they're saying too. Like I said, yeah. I think we're we we understand the connotation there. The most versatile score ever, deepest bag of offensive counters ever, right? I think we understand that's what they're saying. But best skill both player ever, bro. That that's just way too bro, uh, broad of a brush, right there, bro. You know that that's where we're at. We understand yeah. the connotation, but I, I kind of like for words to mean things, bro. You feel me? So, so that's where I'm at with it, nigga. But like, uh, that's 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 a, that's a, that's what motherfuckers say when niggas use words that in, in a way that they don't mean us. You know what I'm saying? Like, we use words outside of the, the way they're defined in Webster's, right? So do Hoopers. It means a particular thing within that space. We use words and it means a particular thing. Okay, so just, the, it just when happens when to be a word. It just happens to be a word that does also mean the other things and that we like, do use When I'm to saying a crib, I don't mean a crib. I mean St. Louis, <laughs> nigga. You feel me? Whoa, I like that word. All right. mean the Before crib, you know we get into a whole conversation about fucking Stenectady, I feel, <laughs> I feel I mean, we get into like... I mean, nigga, nigga just did a crazy shit and we want so, what's semantics. I'm like, nigga, why are we like, come on, let's talk about, what about he did. semantics. We yeah, Dave said he's the most skilled player ever in Tyler Most, most Tyler skilled player ever is, is bra, bro. Yeah, most skilled <laughs> ever player ever. That's a that's a lofty fucking crown, dude. And like I said, Kyrie is in a category of all his own. And let's just let's just categorize categorize him correctly. That's all I'm at. Amongst with, Niggas that fuck that that in basketball, that's the category he's in. You know Tyler what I mean? Fucks I just basketball, bro. I know. I'm not saying. I'm, I'm saying the, the the gods. The gods are saying that. Like, why are we? I don't know. For don't sure. Know. And they're right. And we they're right about the thing that they're saying. They're just using language that we wouldn't use. That's it. Okay. I, I, we're not even arguing with the point they're making. We're just right. arguing about like that's not the way I would describe it. If you feel that's overly semantic, for sure. I, I agree with Tyler. It's like, I specifically use these words to describe other players. So I feel a need to distinguish that. You know what I mean?
Kyrie had his ass and titties out, and y'all want to talk about fiscal responsibility. <laughs> and I just wanted to come over here and talk about ass and titties. If you want and to talk is, about and, the and, personality and, traits of Kyrie Irving, John, we can do and that. Is, and then, no, this is, I'm ta- I, I, just, I just said I didn't want to talk about that. I'm talking about the other thing. The man was, he was out there being thick and had his cheeks out, and I want to talk about them cheeks. You feel me? And y'all came over here and want to talk about, well, he's not, you know, I, all right, cool. That's how I and, feel and we like, got here because of To it. use your analogy, I feel like you sent us a quote of Dame Lillard saying, that's the most that full figure. I didn't say that's that. the most full figured woman I've okay, ever okay. seen on a woman okay. with a huge ass and no titties. <laughs> that's what I feel like is is you're saying. And Tyler and I are just saying that to us, the phrase full figured requires both ass and titties. That's all we're saying. <laughs> and, that's and, and, I, and I I love yeah. a, I love I love a woman with no titties and a big ass. So maybe that's just preference. You know what I'm saying? So hey. That's, hey, that's the ideal body shape. That's you a know great bow right there. All right, let's make a really <laughs> was, awkward transition into talking about the new Beyonce album. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking about full figure. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. With all due respect. Respect, With all due respect of course, to Mrs. Carter. <laughs> you, Mrs. Carter, indeed. Uh, Beyonce dropped the uh, album cover for her upcoming country music album. I want to. Uh, I, I'm. I would assume everyone who has cared about this has seen it, but I, I want to uh, give a little bit of the context. She said the album is. She's dressed up in red, white, and blue. She's riding a white horse. Tyler already talked about the importance of the symbolism of the horse in this three acts that she's going to be doing. She's also carrying an American flag, and she referenced uh, in discussing what went into the uh, cover for Cowboy Carter. She referenced her 2016 Country Music Awards performance with the Dixie Chicks, uh, where she was uh, heckled from the uh, crowd. She said, this album has been over five years in the making. It was born out of an experience that I had years ago where I did not feel welcomed, and it was very clear that I wasn't. Mm. What was your guys' reaction to the album cover and to this way that she is... uh, taking artistically to deal with that feeling of not being welcome. I mean, I, I love the motivation for the album. Uh, she basically just the, the, the MJ meme. And I took that personally and like a fucking audio Facts. for her, Right. Facts. So yeah. Facts. So yeah, I, I love that. You're not going to tell Beyonce what she can and can't do. Are you fucking crazy? So very <laughs> much, very much like I'm not even a big country dude, but of course I'm a big Beyonce fan. So I'm gonna be locked in for this. So, you know, knowing that there was that added motivation of her wanting to prove motherfuckers wrong on that, that for sure piques my interest even a bit more here. I mean, yeah, I love Beyonce saying I'm Beyonce. The fuck you mean? I'm me. Like I can, I'm, I'm. A, I, well, you do this. Well, I, you say, you say this. Well, I'm going to hold and make a whole ass album. You feel me? Fuck you mean? But like, I, I, the American flag. You know what is what is the symbolism with that? I'm wondering. You know, I kind of. I mean, I mean for, for, from the picture, it looks like it's it was just her at a rodeo, right? Like I don't think she's okay. out here being a patriot or you know just. I being, mean, a country you know, album, American flag. What do you? I mean, there's yeah. a yeah, there's a. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping it's a little bit of like reclaiming the space. I would I love say, that. Do not, I would do not love, fuck with American flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love if it's that and it spoke to that. But like, yeah, that. Can I don't know if I can say this well. It feels a little like pandering. Ooh. So you think you 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 think Beyonce? So you think she's pandering to white folks? I I I, I don't I don't I'm not saying she is because I don't think she is. I'm not saying, but that's what it feels like. I'm talking about my feelings when I see American flag, and she's holding that American flag. While you know making a country album that is not generally music that we listen to, we're gonna listen to because of Beyonce. You know what I mean? It feels a particular way to me, and I just would want to know the because like it could be reclaiming. It I think, could be reclaiming, yeah, so, and, so, I, and I so, hope that's so, what it so is. Biko just sent like a little uh, a, a Twitter analysis. It was exactly what I was gonna say, which is the letter that accompanied the photo was about reclaiming spaces where quote you did not feel welcome, and she's holding an American flag. Oh, so perfect, I, like, oh, perfect, I, okay. love that, yeah. love that, love that. That that's I don't think it's about that. And, and you know what? I was no, no, say, no. She if she no. If they, she said it was about that. She just said it's about that, right? Yeah, no, yeah. it's her team. Yeah, and, right? and, cool, perfect. Yeah, yeah perfect. And, and and my and my counter to your point was going to be you know Renaissance was just so celebratory of black people and black gay people in particular, right? Like yeah, so, yeah. so I was like, I don't see her pandering. To, to white people. I don't see that that would be the next move here in, in, in the trilogy. But then that but then that quote there of how she's reclaiming space because that was what Renaissance was about too. It was about reclaiming these genres that black gay people pioneered. So I'm saying, I never said, I, I was saying I, that's how it feels to me. And I told you, I don't think she did that. I don't think she would do yeah, that. Doesn't yeah, make yeah. sense for Beyonce to do that. That's and your so emotional wondering, reaction to yes, seeing the American yes, flag. Yeah, to be, to be in the, like, why, like, why are we doing that? You know, and, but speak, but I, I'm glad that's a, what she was, and, I, and it makes sense what she was doing. But yeah, 
I it didn't make sense Beyonce holding an American flag, and I was wondering yeah. why. You feel me? Based yeah. on how she, how vocal she's think- been when it comes to like the injustices that's going on. You know what I'm saying? So I just finished uh, Billie Jean King's autobiography, and and I'm always so impressed by people who change society while being like there's the phrase uh, joyful warrior and i think that's it's such a difficult thing to do to like this is beyonce is making a statement about america on what will be the number one album of the year (laughs) and will probably be a fun as fuck album to listen to as well right but like she's saying like that ability to transform hurt at injustice into something that's a joyful movement or an album that can bring people along and make them feel included. Like, I think that that's such a rare, I just feel like there's like a dozen people on earth, a generation who have that ability. Sometimes they play baseball. Sometimes they play tennis. Sometimes they make music, you know, like I, and there's nothing we could, sometimes they want to run for, for president, you know, like, like whatever. But, um, rumored collaborators on the cowboy Carter album, Dolly Parton, Taylor Swift, Megan the Stallion and Lady Gaga. Wow. All right. That shit it. is going to fucking shift time. That shit be like, oh, I hope, like I hope she, she I was hoping my dog Chris Stapleton made an appearance, but right, 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 yeah. right, right, right. Still, he's not as famous as those four people. Could still be yeah. in, you know what I mean? Just it wasn't publicized in that particular tweet. Could still be. It's going to leave a dent in the planet. You give know what I'm saying? Grammy, give her the CMA. I want her to win all the awards just to piss off the people who are like being upset about this in any way yeah that's the thing that that's the other thing that's great is that the people who are going to be upset are people that we can all enjoy being upset like it's (laughs) right yeah perfect like so like someone yelled at her when she was on stage with the dixie chicks get that bitch off the stage what yelled that from the country music awards bro yelling that with the dixie chicks who 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 went fucking completely left wing with their shit during the during the fucking you know uh war in iraq and shit and beyonce's the one they single out that's wild yeah because it's not about politics, nigga. She black. Yeah, about exactly. That, that's the point. <laughs> you thought. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. It was always this. <laughs> always, always this. You yeah. feel me? Uh, I okay, real we... quickly, I just wanted to say that I do feel like I sent this to you a second ago, Mike, too. I, people forget that Beyonce is from Texas. Like, she was probably raised, I mean, I'm assuming, but, like, raised on country music and Dolly Parton. So, like, mm-hmm. the oh, yeah. uproar of people being upset about her putting up putting out a country music is kind of funny to me because it's like she's in a sense like maybe that's just her going back to her roots and like doing a soulful country r&b whatever it is you know so i just thought that was interesting i mean it's like anytime people try and like say like it's like protect the racial purity of country music it's like it's the music of the south and also it all came out of black music tradition (laughs) So like, yeah, like it, it is her culture. It is right. 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 Like it was her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, we got we only got a couple more minutes, so real quick, uh, I have to bring everyone's attention to uh, <laughs> fucking B- Biko. Thank you for passing this along to us. Dunkin' Donut has released a new drink. The small iced coffee uh, will now be ref- referred to as the Short King in the Dunkin' app. Uh, because sometimes you don't need a large or even a medium. You just need a short king. Is, hey. is this finally representation? I, I, I was going to say, I was gonna, <laughs> representation right there, man. I love it, man. You know, shouts to the short kings, bro. Myself I included. Just, I, just love how fun, I just love how fun it is, too. You know what I mean? Like, you could just say small. No, let's call it short king. You know what I mean? I love that. Need that in business. You feel me? Bring bring back whimsy. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the real. The, yeah, with the, we're the official podcast of whimsy and yearning. Okay. Bro, bro, that, bro. that is a, that's our brand. We want more whimsy. We want more fucking yearning. I could frolic with a short king. Fucking. You know what I'm saying? Like drink for sure. G. I need that. <laughs> I need that, bro. All right. Uh, last last thing before we get out of here, I have a quick game that I want to play, which is it's called dickhead or asshole. Okay, you tell me which one applies here. Charles Xavier started a superhero team that it has been stuck in my head that he really named the Xavier Men. Is he a dickhead or an <laughs> asshole for that? Um, I mean, I don't want to go comic book nerd here, but I kind of get the connotation there. The X being unknown and mutants are, you know, there's some unknown shit going on. With That's what he wants you to think, though, right? Tyler. He said, this gene allows you to fly. I'm going to name it the Xavier gene, bro. Like, that's what... 
That's I mean, more asshole. That, that, I think that's asshole. Scientists would have named the shit like SARS-59 or some shit. You know what I mean? I he know. he just put his own fucking initial on that shit on purpose, bro. I don't know. I I, I guess my definition of dickhead and asshole. I feel like there's got to be a, some malicious intent to be an asshole. I feel like you can be a dickhead just by being inconsiderate. You know what I mean? Or or, or being full of yourself. You feel me? So okay. I'd, I'd probably go dickhead here with that. Dickhead? Even though I understand wow. it. Yeah. Oh, John, wow. you feel his asshole move. I think his asshole. Dickhead seems like something that... Dick, dickheads are mean. You know I what I'm like saying? assholes like, are mean, bro. I, I mean, I, this, How would you describe a person like who opened up a mean school and for children stupid. and then enlisted I, them I into his a, private army named after himself? How would you describe that person? <laughs> <laughs> So, so by the I, way, so, you and your teacher are going to be fucking beating up shoplifters in about 45 minutes here. So get your math homework done. <laughs> uh, oh, Tyler, so you think dickheads are just stupid? I, f- I feel like there's a level of stupidity with dickheads that isn't there with ass. I feel like assholes are pompous. You know, there's some malicious intent there. I feel like a dickhead is a, is a dumb fuck who just pissed you off. That's that's where I'm at with it. I I I I'd, I'd call somebody an asshole before I called him a dickhead. I, I, you'd have to really piss me off for me to call you right because they'd have to do something to you, right? There's there, there's my whole thing. Assholes usually you say that when someone does something with with some malicious intent, right? A, a dick. I say, I'd say dickhead. I'd say a dickhead. If you were if you were if you were coming at me on a, in a particular way, like that's that's the like you you fucking dickhead. I, like I'm almost ready to fight. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, a dickhead is a lot, bro. I think I don't, I I could call somebody an asshole. I think. I think I might get punched in the face. I call somebody a dickhead. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, does, that, does that make more sense? Does that make sense? Like, what's what's most likely to get you punched in the face? Niggas are called assholes, but a dickhead? <laughs> oh, bro, they going they, I, I might get my ass whooped. You know what I'm saying? If I can't whoop the nigga myself, you feel me? Is that am I tripping? Who do you think know. is a quintessential asshole versus a quintessential dickhead? Like, who would be the platonic ideal of those terms for you, for either of you? Oh. Let me ponder this. I would say Donald Damn. Trump is the biggest asshole in the world to me. Yes. And and I, I yeah. He's he's an asshole and I feel like his followers are dickheads, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I feel like there's that's like a perfect kind of example, you feel me? I think he's an asshole and a dickhead. <laughs> I think he's found a way to be both. I said, that's a, I don't know, but that's funny. All right, that's all the time yeah, we've yeah. got. Uh, this episode of Jenkins and Jones brought to you by Webster's Dictionary. Uh, we will be back on Monday with our next regular episode. Uh, enjoy the NCAA tournament. Hope you find some games to watch. Uh, hope uh, you find a way to get out of working for the next couple of days and relax and enjoy some games. We'll see y'all soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.